All right, so today I'm gonna to do some ray casting and I'm gonna freeze zombies with my freeze ray. I'm gonna use ray casting to do that. I thought that would be pretty cool. I got the idea from Rogue Lineage where you shine the flashlight on a zombie and they freeze. All right, so I could jump my beam and it freezes them or I can get frozen too. So I don't have it just freezing zombies. I have it freezing anybody, but I can show you how to change that. So let's go ahead and get a fresh world and build along. And you can see how to use ray casting to freeze things. All right, I have my fresh world here, nothing in it. Let's go ahead and build a freeze ray. So I'm gonna add a part to the world and I'm gonna call this post. It's gonna be my post for my, for my flashlight that goes around. And I have collisions on. I'm gonna go ahead and anchor this post. Anchored and then change the size. One, three, and one. I'm gonna duplicate this, control D, right? And that's gonna be the head. And we need to know the front, right? Cause I'm gonna use the look vector for the head to cast the beam and to shine the light. How do you do that? Hit this plus sign, add a decal, and it will default. The face right here is defaulted to the front. So I know that's the front right there. It's gonna point, it's gonna go out to the right. So I can get rid of that decal now. I know which direction my front face is. Let me go ahead and let's go ahead and change the size. Make this look a little bit more like a flashlight. It's going to be kind of a lame flashlight. One, one, three. I knew to change that on the Z because the blue Z is going this way. So I changed the Z to three. Do a move, push that down. And I'm going to control click the post. So they're both selected. Right click group i call this freeze ray cool and now let's see um i'm gonna add on my head i'm gonna add some attachments for the for the visual beam ray casts are invisible but we want to see it so i have two attachments on the head i'm gonna rename that to att0 and i'll rename this one to att1 and then I'm gonna add a beam to the head, hit the plus on the head, beam, cool. Click the beam, go to attachment zero, click that space there, click this attachment zero, attachment one, click that attachment one. Now, let's click attachment one and pull that out so we could see our beam. There it is, there's our beam. Let's change the thickness of the beam the shape of the beam. So beam and the width zero is the start width, I'll say 0.1. Width one is the end width, I'll say 0.2. Now we're gonna move this programmatically so it doesn't really matter where it starts, but I'm gonna leave it here so we, we can see it. We have a visual, a visual idea of how that's gonna shoot out there. So let's go to our head, add a script. And then um, let's call this caster. Cool. Let's go ahead and do a local head. That's my flashlight head, right? Uh, script.parent, because the script is attached to the head. Oh, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. There it is. It's, script is attached to the head. I thought I put it on the beam. Cool. And we need parameters for our ray cast. So let's go ahead and define that. Ray cast params dot new so you're going to make a new instance of raycast parameters and we're going to do a a filter a filter table we'll say filter table i'll just call it tbl shorten it up a little bit and whatever you put in here we're going to blacklist this it means the raycast is going to ignore it so you can you can uh put anything you don't want your raycast to hit like you might want to be able to shine through a window or something we don't have that but i'm just going to say uh head parent and that the head parent is the freeze ray so anything in the freeze ray is going to be ignored from the ray casting we don't want our ray caster to interfere with our ray casting so we'll say local function let's do a create ray function and we need an origin of our ray Right, so that's going to be head dot position, and then we need a stop. We need a stop point. So I'm going to say stop, and this is where I needed to know the front of the head. 
head C frame look vector. That's the vector that's shooting right out of the front. It's only one stud long, right? So we have to multiply it by whatever length we want so that we have a nice, a nice long beam. I'm going to make it 50 studs long. All right, and now for our parameters, let's do something else with parameters. Let's say filter descendants instances, and then we're going to put our filter table in there. And then we'll say params filter type equals enum raycast filter type equals blacklist. So that is things you don't want the ray to hit. You could use a whitelist and say, hey, I only want it to hit zombies. And that would be easy. You just call you just change blacklist to whitelist. Right? And then put zombies up in here in the filter table. But we're just going to exclude things in ours. All right, so we'll say local. Now let's cast our array. So we're going to get a result. May or may not get a result. Say so workspace ray cast. We're going to start from our origin. We're going to go to the stop position. And then we're going to pass in the parameters. All right. So now if we hit something like a zombie or a wall or something like that, we're going to get a result. So we'll say if result then. And let's check the result. I only want to hit characters. So local hit because we got a result will be the result dot instance so you can get the distance you can get the instance you can get the material position normal is the normal vector so if you took calc 3 you'll know what that is but probably not if you did not take calc 3. so oh let's not do distance let's do instance sorry instance cool if hit dot parent then so we know we have a parent. Let's go ahead and see if we can find a humanoid root part. If H or we'll say local HRP for humanoid root part, hit.parent, we know that exists because we checked for it. Find first child that's a humanoid root part. All right. Now let's check to see if that exists. We'll say if HRP then. Cool. If it did, we probably got a character. So we're going to say for i and v in pairs. So in pairs is a for loop that loops through a collection of objects. i is the key, v is the value. We don't care about i. That's going to be like one, two, three, four, five. We do care about this. That's going to be like hand, foot, torso, things like that. So we're going to say hit dot parent get descendants because the hit dot parent is the character. Get the descendants. I don't know why they had to make that so hard to spell. All right, there we go. Do if V is a base part, like a like a torso or a head or something, we'll say if V is a base part, let's freeze it. You could just freeze the humanoid root part, but then the arms and legs would be moving. So I'm going to say V anchored equals true. Cool. Now, our freeze beam is working. Our ray casting is working to freeze things, but our beam itself is not really doing any updates. So what I want to do down here, outside of the result, whether I hit something or not, I want to change the head's attachment uh, one to the world position. I'm using world position instead of position because with attachments, the position is relative to the parent, which happens to be the head. You'll get funny results. So I'll say origin plus stop, right? And that's going to go out to the end of our beam. Cool. And now let's rotate the head around, right? So we have the head variable. We can get the C frame and then we'll do a times equals C frame angles. And this is going to rotate every time this uh, create ray is called, we're going to rotate an angle on the Y. We're going to rotate the Y axes and it's in radians. So the number has to be small. I hit 0.02 because that's about a degree, right? Degrees is 57 degrees are in a radian. All right. So there we go. Cool. Now let's make a little wait to get into the world before it starts. And then we'll do a loop while wait do 
create ray. Cool. Now this will freeze our character, but it won't unfreeze our character. Let's try it out though. All right, here we go. Boom, we're frozen. Awesome. And we'll stay like that until we die. Because when we die, we get a new instance, right? Everything's destroyed. You recreate your character. So let's unfreeze after five seconds. Not that hard to do. We're, we're done all of the hard stuff. Well, most of the hard stuff. All right, so I need to keep track of who I froze. I'm going to do a table. And I think I'll call this a frozen table. All right. And every time we freeze somebody, let's copy that so you don't forget the name. We go down here. Every time we freeze somebody, we're going to add them to the table. And the character is the hit.parent. And the value, so this is going to be the key, right, in our table. And the value is going to be the time. And I'm going to use tick. So tick is milliseconds after midnight um, from Epoch, which is January 1st, 1970. Uh, most computer languages have something similar to this. Thing is, in Roblox, they don't actually give you the tick in milliseconds. They give it to you in seconds with um, a four decimal place uh, accuracy. So just remember, every other language usually gives it milliseconds, but what we get it in seconds. All right, so we have everybody who got frozen and when they got frozen how do we deal with that let's make let's make a function called create uh, let's see we'll say local function check frozen check frozen all right and here let's do four char remember char is the key t time is the value don't use time though because it's a reserved word in lua in pairs and then what do we call that table i forgot already i think we call it like unfreeze or frozen yeah here it is frozen table frozen table do uh let's see we'll say if tick we'll get a new tick minus our frozen table char that's the value so that's the the tick of when we got frozen if it's greater than five seconds so we'll put a five here then let's go ahead and remove them from the frozen table because we're going to unfreeze them frozen table char all you have to do is make the key equal to nil and that'll take it out of the table and we'll say for i and v in pairs let's move this up in case you're having trouble seeing it pairs char get descendants descendants that's our arms and legs and stuff like that do where did my oh here it is we'll say if is if v is a base part I could have just copied this from above right then v dot anchored is now false cool beans all right and now we'll unfreeze we just got to call this right when do we call it let's call it every loop right so we'll go down here boom we should be good to go now we can freeze and unfreeze our character oh I should put some zombies in there uh, boom and in five seconds we'll be able to unfreeze I should check for check for errors down here there we go no errors cool we're unfrozen should we put a zombie in there check it out let's do it let's go ahead and uh, go to home toolbox drooling zombie ah zombie let's get a nice reliable Roblox zombie put him in there play it And let's see him get frozen. Ah, uh, don't get too close to the head. Oh, he got it. Ah, uh, it's gonna be lame because now he's not gonna unfreeze. Oh yeah, there he goes. Cool, got him. All right. So uh, now that you know how to do the ray casting and the freezing, 
maybe you could try your little rogue lineage flashlight thing, freeze them when you're shining on them, move it away, and then and then he's no longer frozen.